Hey everybody, Prince here. I want to do a uh, somewhat quick video talking about Ring of Honor's Final Battle 2020. Uh, it's going to be airing tomorrow on Pay-Per-View and on Honor Club uh, December 18th. Um, it's going to be taking place in the UMBC Event Center in Baltimore, Maryland, which is where they've been doing recent batches of uh, television tapings. They recently um, have been posting pictures and videos of um, some of the stars going to Baltimore to do some tapings for, for television for the next few weeks. And, uh, yeah, I would say Ring of Honor, it, since their return, I would say Ring of Honor's been good. Um, I would say they've been keeping a lot of the decent to good stuff that people want to see from the current product right now on TV and then anything else that nobody cares about. You know, it's been off to the sidelines or it's going to be relegated to the pre-show or or something on, on the YouTube channel or something like that, which I think is good because... Uh, um, anything other than, like, the, the juicy, meaty stuff, um, anything outside of that, I think people have just lost interest in, because there was, like, a lot of crap that nobody cared about, the fact that they were more, like, storyline-driven, or maybe the fact that they, that some of the divisions or something like that just did not work out, like, the women's division, that just did not work out at all, um, we'll talk about that at a different time, but let's talk about the show. So yeah, I would say Ring of Honor, uh, television has been good the last three months. Uh, not perfect, but at least good. And every episode I've at least enjoyed to a certain degree. And, uh, in the description you're gonna see star ratings for the, uh, for the mat- for- uh, for the matches from each episode that I've seen so far, uh, I've not finished this cur this past week's episode. I did see the, uh, the tag match, but I did not see Gordon- and Woods in the Pure Rules in the Pure Rules match, and uh, yeah, I just want to get this out right now because uh, starting on on Saturday, I'm going to be going on vacation for a couple of weeks, and uh, with where I'm going, uh, the internet's probably not going to be that good at all. So if you don't hear anything from me, or if you don't see a video up on my channel, that's probably the reason why. But I've been trying my best to catch up with uh, wrestling from this year, and even a little bit for last year. I've been watching a few matches this week. Um, maybe I'll put uh, the star ratings for those matches in terms of match recommendations uh, in the description as well. And I even just uh, finished watching a couple matches from NXT, from last night's NXT uh, just a while ago. So yeah, uh, all that out of the way. Final Battle 2020. Looking at this card, I understand that it doesn't have like the depth and it doesn't have like the prestige of like past final battles because when you look at like the best final battles or the most important ones, they had at least something that people were like genuinely excited about. Uh, four starting like around oh three like oh three you had which I did do a review recently of you had a uh, ring of honor versus all Japan in the second half oh four you had Aries Aries beating Joe to to end his world title reign oh five you had uh, Kenta and Marufuji making their ring of honor debuts oh six had Homicide beat Danielson for the world title um, oh eight you had uh, the last three matches which people really love including the main event which saw Danielson and Morishima and their rivalry. Uh, 2009 was their first internet pay-per-view. 2010 had Steen and Generico. 2012 had the Ladder War. 20, let's see, 2015 had AJ and Lethal. And even um, a couple years ago saw, saw the Elite's final appearances in Ring of Honor. So yeah, and I know that Ring of Honor has just not really been on anybody's radar recently, but if you want... And you look at the star ratings in the description for the matches that I've been watching from TV, starting from the last four weeks of the Pure Title Tournament to the most recent episodes, which I'll probably update you, which I'll probably update the star ratings on. Um, yeah, um, give it a look. Give these matches a look. They're all available. I think they're all available for free on Fight TV. Because, um, like, what WWE's been doing with the network with making recent episodes of uh, TV available for free... Um, yeah, Ring of Honor's been doing that as well with Fight TV, which I think is really good. Because, uh, you know, not everybody's going to have money or access to the pro to uh, television, so you might as well make it available for free whenever you can. So if you want to check out any matches that are in the description, go ahead and do that to uh, get yourself acquainted with that. But if you want to get a little bit more acquainted with what's going on in the product, check out the, the weekly show week by week. They do it every Tuesday, I think, late Tuesday morning slash early Tuesday afternoon. Uh, hosted by Quinn McKay, who, by the way, is going to be celebrating her birthday with the airing of this show. So, yeah, that's pretty that's pretty cool. Uh, so that show definitely gives you a little bit of context for what's going on in the product. And uh, finally, the show did actually tape last Thursday, December 10th, but they're going to air the show tomorrow. And unfortunately, with pre-travel testing, there are a few guys that, are not gonna be, that were not able to 
participate with Final Battle, specifically Bandito, Flamita, um, EC3, and Kenny King. You know, Kenny King's not much of a loss, but with Bandito and Flamita, kind of a shame because they're going to miss out on the six-man tag team championship title defense they were supposed to have against Shay Taylor Promotions. And um, EC3 is going to miss out on the big grudge match against Jake Briscoe, which they've been building up for the last month. Uh, even though I wasn't really like invested in the storyline for those two, um, that's not much of that big of a loss right now because I have no idea what direction they're going with EC3 anyway. And uh, with the six-man tag title match, though, I thought that would have been a really good match for the card. You know, kind of something in the middle, something early on even uh, to get the crowd excited. But yeah, um, now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the show. So the show is going to be a total of four hours long, but... The first hour of that show is going to be made available for free on multiple social media platforms, including um, uh, YouTube. They're going to stream it tomorrow um, tomorrow night, uh, which I think is pretty good. And uh, yeah, this is technically basically the pre-show, but uh, yeah. Uh, let me quickly go through this. So we have Brian Johnson taking on Danhausen. If Danhausen wins, he gets an ROH contract. Danhausen was like this cult. Not a cult character, but I don't know. I'm not really familiar with the character, and I've not really seen anything from Brian Johnson, so I can't really comment on whether or not the match was good or bad. Thankfully, they relegated this to the pre-show because a nobody's been paying attention to this to this storyline whatsoever, and they've hardly made any mention of it on the television product, uh, or with the exception of the week by week show. But other than that, nobody really cares about this uh, unless you're a fan of Dan House, and which good for you. Um, but I'm not going to say this match is going to suck or be any good, but it might be just a comedy match of sorts with a, a nice little uh, a nice little um, payoff for Danhausen. Kind of kind of reminiscent of uh, the match Delirious had with uh, Ricky Reyes at Better Than Our Best in 2006, where Cornette came out and cut that promo saying that if Delirious didn't win the match, he wasn't going to keep his spot on the roster, but Delirious beat Ricky Reyes and he kept the spot on the roster, finally winning a matchup, um, which is good. So you're going to have, like, that nice, bittersweet moment for, for, for Dan Housen in this case. So, yeah, not really much I can say there. And it's going to be a four-corner survival match. The winner gets a shot at the television title against Dragon Lee later in the night. Tony Deppin versus LSG versus Josh Woods versus Dak Draper. Um, not familiar with all these guys. Uh, Tony Deppin um, had that showing against PJ Black in the first round of the pure title tournament, but was, but was eliminated early by by Black, um, but a lot of people were really hoping to see him uh, advance further in the tournament or have a better showing, uh, so I guess by popular demand, he's brought back. I've heard he's kind of like, uh, and I liked his personality in the video packages, so it's good that they brought him back, and uh, this is good, possibly a good opportunity for him to show what he has in this matchup with three other guys. Um, from what I understand, he's a really damn good technical wrestler, um, very... I don't want to say unorthodox, but kind of different, I guess. But yeah, I heard Tony had a great match with Alex Shelley at the at the Collective Weekend. I think it was Joey Janelle's Spring Break. I heard he had a great match with him and a few other people. LSG had that really damn good match with Jay Lethal. Uh, that really damn good Pure Rules match with Jay Lethal uh, last month in November. Uh, that went to a time limit draw, even though Lethal won the match via judge's decision. Uh, yeah, LSG, the best way to describe him, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Doug Williams. Like, he, I, I wouldn't say from what I've seen he's as good as him, but he showed really good psychology. He has kind of the same body type as Doug from years ago. Uh, good size. Yeah, I would say LSG um, is a pretty decent thumbs up, and he had a really damn good showing against Lethal a couple weeks ago, and I'll get to that in a minute. You have Josh Woods, who had that great showing in the pure title tournament, uh, defeating... Uh, Kenny King via judge's decision in the first round, and then when he beat, and then he beat PJ Black in the second round, but was eliminated by jo by Jonathan Gresham, the eventual winner of that tournament, and a really damn good underrated gem um, in the semifinal. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's definitely worth worth watching. And then a couple weeks ago, he had a he had another damn good pure rules match. This time against Jay Lethal, and he actually pinned Lethal clean. Uh, to win the match, which I thought was awesome, a really good match. Uh, uh, Woods, I would say, I don't think he's going to win this match, but I wouldn't really count him out, be mainly because he does seem to be aiming more towards the pure title than he is for the television title, but yeah, um, Woods should have a good showing on this night. And then we have Dak Draper, who I think is actually in a relationship 
or even married to Quinn McKay, so that might give him an advantage. Um, lucky son of a bitch. Um, but yeah, uh, Dak was the winner of the, what was it called? The, ah, what is it called? The, the, the tournament. Um, I can't remember the name of the tournament now, fuck me. Um, uh, that one, like, I guess, Young Lions tournament, uh, last year. And he got the TV title shot against Dragon Lee earlier this year, but came up short. He kind of has the size of Matt Morgan, but the... I don't know. He, he kind of reminds me of Matt Morgan, but not really as shitty, I guess. Um, but he has kind of like the face of Matt Seidel. And yeah, it was weird, that match with Brian Johnson he had a few weeks ago, where he's kind of the baby face against Brian Johnson, but in contrast, he was kind of acting like a cocky asshole. I don't know. And I know Danhausen's going to be like, Shh, no swearing, no swearing. Um, but yeah, Dak, I don't really care about, but I, I I would have to predict LSG to win this match because I would say if, he, if Dragon Lee isn't going to come back for Ring of Honor or if they want to put the title on somebody else because Dragon Lee's been out for so long with the, uh, from the company, give it to LSG and have him go on a nice little decent run and um, maybe even face Jay Lethal in a rematch, you know, because they have the story there. They set up a nice story um, pretty well that LSG and Lethal, they were so... Even throughout the match, LSG came so close to submitting Lethal, uh, but the time limit ran out. But he lost by judge's decision. I think it was I think it was split decision. They said so. Yeah, I would say give the win to LSG here, but I wouldn't count out Josh Woods going after the title or even Dak Draper. Unfortunately, Tony Deppin's not going to look like he's going to get it. But yeah, um, I'm going to predict LSG to win, followed by Josh Woods and Dak Draper. Then we have six main card matches. As I mentioned, there were supposed to be. Uh, um, two other matches for the main card. So in total, there would have been 10 matches. Um, three pre-show and then... I think like three pre-show matches and then seven main card matches. But obviously the two are out. And now they have two pre-show matches, aka hour one matches, and six main card matches, which I think is fine. Um, we have a nice little diverse... kind of a diverse uh, lineup here because it looks like it's half tag matches and half... Uh, singles matches, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, let me quickly get the television title match out of the way. So, yeah, that's not going to open the show. That'll go later, I'm pretty sure. But, um, yeah, I would say LSG is the most likely to win the match and pop, win the four-quarter survival with B-Dragon Lee. I wouldn't really be against that, especially if they set up a matchup with Jay Lethal down the line, which we'll see. Um, but, yeah, Dragon Lee, he's not been in the, comp in the company since, I think... March, when they did those first five house shows early in the year. But Lee won the title last year against Shane Taylor, ending his long title reign. Uh, he had a couple title defenses earlier in the year, including a supposedly really good opener uh, at Saturday Night at Center Stage against Andrew Everett. Uh, he challenged for the t for the world title a couple times. But yeah, Dragon Lee, I do miss him being in, in Ring of Honor. I thought he would have had a great title reign, but because he was in Mexico, because of travel restrictions, he wasn't able to come, but I might as well make the criticism right now, the fact that they've not really been promoting him, the fact that they've not really had any promos or video packages with Dragon Lee at all is a big disappointment, uh, or, or even with Roosh as well, with, with the main event, as I'll talk about later, the fact that they've not been promoting these guys, I think is a mistake, because the fact that they've not promoted these guys, you're not really selling people on checking these guys' work out on on seeing, yeah, I want to see these guys go after the world title. I mean, they've done a better job promoting the Four Corner Survival guys, specifically LSG and Josh Woods, and promoting Brody King more than they have the champions, which I think is a disappointment. I have no idea when they came into the United States to tape the show or when they came in to do television tapings or whatever, but the fact that they've not put out any video packages or nothing, I kind of find that frustrating personally. Um, but if you want a taste from these guys, I mean, you can watch almost any Dragon Lee match, and it would be awesome. If you want a taste of Roosh, check out the tag match he and Dragon Lee had against the Briscoes on TV last year, and the match where he won the world title against Matt Taven at Death Before Dishonor. Both are on YouTube right now. Both are great, underrated matches we're checking out. Definitely will give you a taste of both guys if you want an example. This past weekend, I know Ring of Honor did a all Roosh weekend thing where they streamed a bunch of his Ring of Honor matches on YouTube. I didn't get the chance to see it, uh, but there was some decent stuff. And plus they did, they have been um, releasing some of his matches on YouTube recently. Like the one with Bandito, I heard was really good. He, they uploaded one with uh, Tracy Williams. They did one with Jeff Cobb recently. 
But yeah, um, as a prediction, back to Dragon Lee, I'm going to predict LSG to potentially win the title, but I wouldn't count out Dragon Lee uh, retaining the title. But again, I don't know what their status is with the company right now. Who knows what they're going to do because Lee and, and Roosh have been so inactive for months. But yeah, um, that out of the way. Um, first up, I think this could open the show. I'm not sure what's going to open the show, to be honest, because they might as well even the match the, the card out. But next up, uh, what they have here is the first ever Pure Rolls Tag Team Match. We have the foundation of Tracy Williams and Rhett Titus versus Freddy Ahai and Wheeler Yuta. So Yehai and, and Yuta were two standouts in the Pure Title Tournament. Uh, Yu, uh, Yehai had, excuse me, Yehai had that really good match in the first round with Silas Young, and he had a killer Second round match against Tracy Williams. Again, go check those matches out. They're both really good, especially the Williams match. That was awesome. And then Yuta had a great match in the first round against Jonathan Gresham. I love that match. One of my favorite TV matches of the year so far. Both are on Fight TV. Check them out. Um, they were great. And I, I was really impressed with both guys' showing in the tournament. I've seen more of Yehai than I have of Yuta. But that match with Gresham really sold me a, a bit on, uh, on Yuta. Uh, Tracy, in my opinion, was the MVP of the tournament, had great matches up and down the tournament. Uh, he had a really good match in the first round against Russ Taylor, second round I mentioned with Yehai, had the match of the tournament against Lethal in the semifinal, and then the great final against Jonathan Gresham coming up short. But the foundation is now this group that's trying to purify Ring of Honor, bring back the pure style. Like, think of it as if Brian Danielson, Nigel McGuinness, Doug Williams... And, uh, I don't know, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head, and, and, against, and I guess Loki, as a stable back in the early years of Ring of Honor. Think of, think of him like that, like those guys trying to purify what Ring of Honor was about, technical wrestling, submission wrestling, and athleticism. So yeah, the Foundation, I think, is a really cool idea of, of a stable. They even released um, some cool merch for both the Foundation and Jonathan Gresham, including the replica octopus mask, which I think is really fucking awesome. So yeah, um, Williams was... Um, was in contact with Gresham joining the foundation and Rhett Titus. Rhett Titus was such a bizarre reveal for me. I don't know. I'm not going to point anything yet in terms of whether or not I'm sold on Titus in this role. But he, he's been with Ring of Honor for a long time. Like, I think since 2008, I think. So, yeah. I don't know. I can't really make any comments here. But I love the idea of the Pure Rules Tag Match. Let me pull up the... Uh, how long have we gone on for? 17 minutes. Okay, let me let me fucking... Speed it up. So I love the idea of the Pure Rules tag. Let me pull up the... Okay, so the rules of the Pure Tag match says here... Um, in addition to the standard rules for Pure Singles matches, the following rules will be in effect for Pure Tag Team Contests. A legal tag requires the wrestler on the apron to reach over the top rope and tag his partner hand to hand while holding the tag rope with his other hand. So, even so, you can't tag your partner in the back. You can't tag him on the head or anything like that. Not even the feet, as like some tag teams have tried to do. So, it has to be hand to hand while holding the tag rope, which I think is an interesting little detail. Each wrestler has five seconds to exit the ring after a tag is made. And then the last one, probably the most interesting thing. Is that they're still going to keep the three the three rope break rules um, like you normally do for the regular singles uh, pure uh, pure wrestling matches. However, each time a break tag, each time a team breaks up a pinfall or submission, that team will lose a rope break. Breaking up a pinfall or submission when a team is out of rope breaks will result in a disqualification. So let's say if Yuta was in a situation where he's about to be submitted. Uh, and then Yehai comes in and takes down like Tracy to get to break up the submission. They lose a rope break. If let's say if the situation was the same, but they had no more rope breaks, if Yuta came in to break up the uh, to break up the submission, that would be a disqualification. So yeah, I, I like that. That that's a nice another la little dimension to the pure rules uh, concept, which I really like. Um, yeah. And I think they're going to do this with the Tag Team Championship, because I remember in a video package, Jonathan Gresham said that their t upcoming title match, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, is going to be the last time they're going to defend the title that's not under pure tag rules. So that means this is kind of like a sampler of what they're going to do with the concept and transition it over to Lethal and Gresham for the tag titles, which I think is really cool, because it's definitely going to really um, straighten out the 
the idea of tag team wrestling. So if you're not a fan of flippy, dippy tag team wrestling that we've been seeing like on AEW or something like that, or you don't like those um, really stupid um, way to catch your opponent type uh, thing off a dive thing, you're, you're not going to get that with this one. I think this could be really cool. Uh, I don't know anything about Red Titus's current like wrestling background. I haven't seen too much of him in a singles role, but I think the concept is really cool. And, um, yeah, I can't really say too much about Rhett Titus in this role, but I do think Tracy will really kill it in there with Yehi and Wheeler. Uh, so as a prediction, I'm going to go with the Foundation to win this matchup. So yeah, there's that. Um, next up, I want to talk about Jonathan Gresham's two title defenses, because not only is he the Ring of Honor pure champion, but he's also the one half of the tag team champions with uh, Jay Lethal. So this next one is going to be for the tag team titles, Mark Briscoe and PCO challenging the foundation of Jay Lethal and Jonathan Gresham. So Lethal and Gresham beat the Briscoes last year, last year at Final Battle to win the tag titles. I haven't seen the match, but I really want to. I heard it was great. Um, they won the titles last year, but they only had one proper title defense, and that was against two GIT, aka two two guys, one tag of Silas Young and Josh Woods at one of the uh, the house shows earlier this year. I'm guessing Bound by Honor, maybe Gateway to Honor. I'm not sure. Uh, they got the title match for that. Uh, for that, for one of those shows, but they came up short. They were originally supposed to do Lethal and Gresham versus the Briscoes at Supercard of Honor, and if I found, and I can't remember, but I think I found the match graphic for, or the prediction graphic, that said it was supposed to be a ladder war, so that was supposed to happen at Supercard of Honor, but it didn't happen, obviously, along with the anniversary show weekend, and the past versus present, and the original PR title tournament, and the new women's, t uh, women's championship tournament, all that got canceled because of COVID, and they had to shut down, which I think was the, the best move they could go for, but it's kind of a shame we didn't get that match, because I thought that would have been such a unique one, such a unique one, because seeing Gresham, who's such the purest definition of a pure wrestler, like, kind of like the next evolution of Brian Danielson, in terms of his technical style, to compete in a ladder war, I mean, that would have been so interesting to see, just in terms of psychology, at least, uh, but that didn't happen, um, and it looked like that they were going to set up a title match between the Briscoes and Lethal and Gresham for this show. But with uh, Jay being busy with EC3, which of course is now not going to happen, uh, Mark was frustrated, so he wanted to look out for a partner. And check out the promo when he reveals his tag team partner. So uh, it was really an entertaining promo. And it was kind of cute, the one line in the, in the promo, which I'll get into in a second. So he went out to look for a partner. You know, out of frustration, like, you know what, I got the, I got the tag team title shot in my back pocket. You got the tag team title shot in your back pocket, Jay. But you know what? It's the time of Christmas. It's like, you know what? It, it's your Christmas season. And every year, I send that letter to Santa. And you know what I've been asking for? My own monster, PCO. <coughs> God damn, yeah, sorry. So he picked PCO as his tag team partner. And, and that promo I thought was kind of neat. It was just so funny to me. And uh, so they had the match earlier this week as kind of a sampler against the Bouncers. Um, what was it? Brawler, Brawler Malonis and the Beer City Bruiser. It was a fun tag match. Um, and Mark and PCO, uh, they're, they're called the Wild Men. I think they're going to be called the Wild Men for this show, which I think is so funny. Um, so they're going to be challenging for the tag titles against Lethal and Gresham. It makes sense to do... Oh, son of a bitch. Sorry, guys. I'm getting a, a call. I'm going to have to pause the Sorry, guys, I, I got a video call. Fuck. <laughs> uh, Craig, if you're watching this, now I know your frustration in, in past recordings. <laughs> anyway, um, let's fucking finish this. So, um, I think it's cool that Mark and PCO are a tag team because PCO, with the whole thing with Marty Skrull and Vill Villain Enterprises, you know, along with Brody King and Flip Gorton getting their title shots later in the show, um... And it looks like Villain Enterprises is now split up because if you don't know or don't remember, um, Marty Skrull got re-signed to the company late last year and he actually got the, the head booker role. Uh, obviously, he had to work with a committee, but um, he got the main head booker role and um, wasn't going to be wrestling that much. But unfortunately, with the, with the recent speaking out movement and a recent allegation against him, his current status in the company is now frozen. So that means he's not fired, but they're not using him on anything right now. He's not part of booking. He's not wrestling. He's not doing anything now. So until they complete their investigation of the, of the, of the accusation, um, Skrull's contract 
um, he's not going to do anything now for a while until the investigation finishes, which is going to take a long time, I think, from what I heard. So because of that, the other members of uh, Villain Enterprises are now doing their own thing, which I think is cool. So to pair a PCO with Mark Briscoe, I think, is a really cool idea. Plus, it makes sense because PCO won um, the tag titles in the past. In fact, it was actually him and Brody King that beat the Briscoes uh, in that crazy street fight that I heard about at the 17th anniversary show last year. Uh, he also won the six-man tag titles with uh, Villain Enterprises. And then last year at Final Battle, he actually beat... Uh, Roosh for the world title in the main event, which was a pretty crazy match, actually, if you haven't seen it. Um, so yeah, it makes sense for, for PCO to join Mark Briscoe, and it's just kind of a neat idea, just two wild men going for the tag titles, and uh, this being the last time that um, Gresham and Leith are going to defend it under regular tag rules. So, as a prediction, though, uh, it's pretty predictable. It's going to go to Gresham and Lethal, but I think the match could be fun. Considering Gresham has two title matches on the night, I would say you should have this open the show and then have Gresham and, and um, Gordon later in the night, maybe before the main event. I don't know, but uh, we don't know how they're going to structure the show, but we'll wait and see. Um, speaking of Gresham, he has the other title defense, that being his pure title defense against Flip Gordon. So Flip kind of made his honor return on week by week a few weeks ago where he said he wanted to join the pure division, but he still has that world title um opportunity in his back pocket when he won the battle royal at free enterprise earlier in the year so with roosh not with roosh being occupied uh he's gonna go after the pure title even though he did beat josh woods i'm just not convinced that that um that flip is gonna go is really gonna take himself as seriously in the pure rules division i don't know i don't i don't I don't buy it at the moment because Flip has primarily been a high flyer. I like the idea that they're trying to have him be more, like, well-rounded as a wrestler. But, again, I'm not buying it. I mean, PJ Black, I would say he was the most underwhelming performer in the tournament. I mean, both of his matches, uh, the one against uh, Josh Woods and the first round against Tony Deppin, they were good matches, but they were by far the worst matches of the entire tournament. And I think it just came down to the fact that PJ was just not comfortable working the, the Pure Rules uh, style. And I think the, th the same thing might be said with uh, with Gordon here. I haven't seen this match with Josh Woods this week. Uh, I'll check it out whenever I can. But, um, yeah, I think this could be a good matchup here. They're, they're still going to make it an athletic match, but they're going to be, I guess, a little bit more limited and constrained with the pure rule style. But we'll have to wait and see. Uh, as a prediction, I'm going to go with Gresham to retain the championship. This should be a good matchup, but I'm not expecting anything spectacular. It could be good. We'll have to wait and see. Then it's going to be, uh, okay, last match before the main event. It's going to be a grudge tag team match. The OGK, a.k.a. the original kingdom of Matt Taven and Mike Bennett versus the Righteous of Vincent and Bateman with uh, Vita Von Starr in their corner. So the Righteous is this stable slash group, kind of like a cult group, started up by Vincent, formerly Vinny Marsalia, who was um, part of the New Kingdom uh, with TK Orion and Matt Taven a couple years ago, they were the six-man tag team champions. But uh, last year, the the group had split up when uh, Vincent had turned on Matt Taven. I think he even took out TK Orion. They had a match of final battle last year, which I heard was good, but I'm not really like anticipating anything special. And then on that show, um, along with Bateman, he basically broke uh, Matt Taven's ankle. It took him off of uh, TV for months. I guess they were going to do something for Supercard of Honor, maybe Best in the World or something like that. Maybe even Death of Port of Honor, but obviously that didn't happen. And it wasn't until recently around, I think, early or late October, Matt Taven made his return, attacked Vincent during a promo, got a little bit of revenge, then Bateman came into the picture, had a match against Taven that he came up short against. Then following the matchup, uh, Vincent was going to throw like a, like a dart or something like that at Taven, but then... Out of nowhere, Mike Bennett returned to reunite with Matt Taven, which I thought was a really nice, sweet moment. Because Bennett, I'll say this, Bennett, I think, is an okay performer. I don't hate him, but I don't love him either. Like, I don't love him, but I don't hate him either. He's just okay to me, you know? It's kind of like uh, like how Sanders kind of described, had um, had, talked, had referenced uh, when Truth Slayer was talking about BJ Whitmer. He's like, not fan of Jimmy Ray, but uh, BJ Whitmer, he's okay. That's kind of the same feeling I get with Mike Bennett. Like, when he's good, he's good. When he's bad, um, haven't seen that yet, but yeah. 
Bennett going to WWE was just such a such a bad thing. But he did do decently in Impact. I mean, his best matches were against EC3 at Slammiversary. And I remember he had a great no holds barred match against Moose at one of the one night only uh, pay-per-views in 2017. So check those matches out if you can. Uh, but Bennett in WWE, we all know how much of a disaster that was, you know, with his um, with his addiction problem and then with WWE's booking and everything. And it finally got released. I think it might have been, was it last year or was it earlier this year that he got released? So yeah, uh, he got released. He, he actually had an NWA title match recently against Nick Aldis. I think it aired on the, uh, on the Shockwave television program that they've been doing uh, with the UWN. Uh, but yeah. Oh, excuse me. Bennett made his return. He had a match against Vincent recently, uh, but the match ended disqualification and his knee was targeted and there was this huge brawl that started that set up this tag match. Okay, two things. One, I have no idea if Maria's actually going to be involved with this because... Maria, I think, when was it? Just a few months ago? I think it was a few months ago that she actually gave birth to her second child with Bennett. I'm not sure when that was, so I'm not expecting her. So if it was just recently, which by the way, congratulations to every other female wrestler that either got pregnant or is about to deliver a baby this year. Because uh, last night they actually announced that Brandy um, and Cody are expecting their first child, which is cool. Uh, I know Sarah Logan got pregnant recently. Uh, Becky Lynch just gave birth to her child with Seth Rollins recently, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I have no idea if Maria's going to return, but uh, considering the, the valet of the righteous, the pro she probably will. But it would be just weird because Maria is just a lot better as a heel than she is as a babyface, but I can't really confirm that. You know, same with Taven and Bennett, you know. We know them better as a heel tag team than they are as a with the original kingdom than they were as a uh, as baby faces but yeah um and the other thing is that i don't think this could really work as a regular tag and considering there really isn't any other match that's going to be like in that direction considering the the intensity of the feud i would have this be a no disqualification match like the only reason why i say that is because i think bennett and taven had a tag match or, or, or I can't even remember. There was a tag match, I think, the Briscoes versus Mike Bennett and Matt Hardy at Best in the World 2014. It ended in DQ, but then it restarted as a no-DQ match. I think they might go down that direction, but I'm not really counting anything against that. I'm not really, like, banking on that happening. But, you know, I think it might happen, but I'm not expecting anything too special here. As a prediction, you know, if the feud ends here, I would say give it to OGK. But if it doesn't, give it to the Righteous, and it'll probably set up a Vincent, Matt Taven fight without honor later down the line. But, you know, I don't really care about the feud. I'm just providing the context. I guess I guess I'm providing enough of context for this one. So, yeah, th this might be the weakest match, match on the show in terms of the main card, but it, it, I don't think it could be that bad. And then we're going to get the main event, Roosh versus Brody King for the ROH World title. I think this could be a really good bruiser type of matchup, like a hard-hitting affair. Uh, so Roosh made his debut for Ring of Honor a couple years ago, uh, went on an undefeated streak throughout 2019. Uh, he beat Dalton Castle twice, first at G1 Supercard, and then at Summer Supercard at an ODQ match. Uh, then he get, finally won the Ring of Honor World title, defeating Matt Taven at Death Before Dishonor last year, which the match is up on YouTube right now. If you want to check it out, definitely do so. One of my favorite hidden gems. Of 2019 great match highly recommended uh, but then he lost the championship last year to PCO at final battle but then he chased the championship for a couple months until he regained the title from PCO I think it was at gateway to honor in a triple threat match that featured Mark Haskins and now he's going to defend the title for the first time since March on this show so yeah I don't know I uh, I'm kind of split here with this match because on the one hand I want Roosh, I want Brody King to win the championship just because they've been doing a decent job of uh, building him up on TV. He had two big wins first against Dalton Castle, a former world champion. Then he had that really good showing against uh, uh, Shane Taylor on TV, who's a former TV champion. So I don't know. I, I don't know if they're actually going to stick with this as a singles match because keep in mind. Unless he's back, not unless he's over in the UK right now. Uh, Mark Haskins, he was supposed to face Roosh at the anniversary show, but that didn't happen. So I don't know if he's 
he's there in Ring of Honor right now, but again, they were speaking out and there was kind of a controversy with uh, with him and uh, some sort of incident that happened years ago. Um, what else? Flip Gordon, I know, has had some heat recently because of some stupid remarks about COVID. Um, and I mentioned earlier, he has that world title shot in his back pocket, so maybe he's going to cash in and compete in this championship match. Maybe he's going to save it for a title for later down the line if he... Considering he, he's pretty much going to lose to Gresham on this night. So, I don't know. And then on the other hand, Rouge could potentially def, uh, retain the title to continue the reign and then potentially lose it to somebody worthy in another singles match at a bigger pay-per-view. I don't know. But I think if it's Brody King versus Rouge in the main event, I think this could be a really good fight. Um, because Rouge is so explosive with his offense, especially with his uh, dropkick finisher. When you, you get the book... If you get the bull, you get the horns, I think it's called. Um, that dropkick he delivers is so fucking cool. One of the best finishers in recent memory I can think of. But uh, yeah, I don't know. In terms of prediction, uh, it's kind of tough because they could instantly change it. And I forgot to mention, you know, I said that Shane Taylor was supposed to be in the six-man tag title match. But considering he's not in that match now, um, who knows? Maybe he will get added to this title match. Who, who really knows? Unless they're setting these guys up. For title matches down the line for uh, for a bigger pay-per-view or for television. I don't know. Because of Roosh's inactivity for months, I honestly don't know. And obviously Kenny King's not going to get involved with this. So, uh, I honestly don't know. I think I might have to give it to Brody King on this one. Because if it's just him and, and Roosh, I would say set him up to be the, the guy for the company for right now. Until everything is cleared up or whatever it gets cleared up. I don't know. That's kind of my frustration with this match. Just the fact that there really isn't like a clear direction with what they're going with. With the with the world title and the television title. The fact that they've not been defended. I mean hell, none of the titles. I just remembered. None of the titles have been defended on TV in months. So that's kind of the frustration. So yeah. So yeah, I think Final Battle this year could be really good. Um, I'm not expecting a spectacular show, but there could be a couple of great matches on the card. As long as it's a solid, consistent wrestling show, I'll be happy with the show. And I'll be happy to support Ring of Honor sometime in the future. It, once I get my paycheck and once I get the, the money that I'm owed for a couple of jobs that I've been doing recently, I'll probably take the money that I have and buy myself a Jonathan Gresham or even a Foundation t-shirt because Gresham is one of my favorites and probably my favorite Ring of Honor right now. So yeah, Final Battle 2020, if you're not convinced to check out the show, uh, I'm not sure if I really convinced you anymore to check out the show, but I do think it could be a really good, solid card from top to bottom. In the description, again, are going to be links to, um, it's going to be my ratings for some of the matches I've been watching from Ring of Honor Television. I'll also put in some some ratings for some of the, the matches I've been watching recently from wrestling in general, whether it be television or pay-per-view. Uh, I'll actually upload, I actually did record um, a, uh, a video talking about NXT TakeOver War Games 4, um, but I need to edit the audio in with the video, to edit the audio with the images uh, as best as possible, because that video is about as long as this one, about 35 minutes, this one's going nearly 40, but again, this is a preview of that paper, of Final Battle, um, but this will probably, but if I do like an audio video talking about Final Battle, it'll probably not be as long as this one as this preview video but yeah check it out i would say final ba final battle looks to be good on paper check out the television matches uh, that i recommend in the description below and until next time folks peace